Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Friday, May 25th, 2012, and I'm Darko. You can check out my website, it's ggnonline.com, and on YouTube it's ddarko2012 and ddarko2013. So, uh, if you're new, all the headlines and links will be posted in YouTube's video description. Alright, this first article I have up in this first video is going to be mostly about the economy. So, real U.S. deficit in 2011 is $5 trillion. A typical American household would have uh, to pay nearly all of its income in taxes last year to balance the budget if the government used standard accounting rules to compute the deficit USA Today analysis finds. Under those practices, the government ran red ink last year, equal to $42,000 roughly per household, nearly four times the official number reported under unique rules set by Congress. Unique rules. So it says here a U.S. household's medium income is $49,000, the census reports. It says the big difference between the official deficit and standard accounting is Congress exempts itself from including the cost of promised retirement benefits, and that will include Hillary Clinton. Uh, who we'll get to here in this video. It says here, U.S. poverty rate for women and children hits 17-year record high. The U.S. Census uh, Bureau annual report reveals that the poverty rate among American women and children reached a 17-year high in 2010, standing uh, at 14.5%. So it indicates that women's poverty rate in the U.S. Uh, is over 17 million people and 15 million American children, the highest in roughly a decade. While it added that the total of 1 million uh, American children have been added to the U.S. poor population in a one-year period between 2009 and 2010 alone. And you remember me uh, covering the toll roads. This article uh, states looking to new tolls to pay for highways. We found this article, $520 toll, late fee, does not fit the crime, says a uh, penalized driver. So. He says that the state is hitting him hard with huge fines for not paying the toll for crossing the state Route 520 floating bridge, but he says he never received the bills in the mail. He said eight trips to the east side and back, and I'm looking at $674. So the representative from the Department of Transportation was quoted as saying, if you do cross the bridge, pay your tolls just like you would pay your parking downtown, just like you'd pay taxes that already go towards the roads. So, Stone added that by getting the prepaid good-to-go pass, that's easy pass, they have them everywhere in Illinois, Indiana, where I live, and it says uh, drivers can avoid dealing with late fees. So that's uh, basically discrimination. Uh, I'm not sure if you've ever driven but and paid with cash, uh, but it just basically makes it easier to go through the little checkpoints because that's what they are. They're little checkpoints. You can see all the stuff. You can see the little panel above uh, above your head when you're paying for the toll, the big panel that's uh, above your head that could see through your uh, see your, through your car, basically X-ray uh, cameras front and rear. They even have a setup, um, little embankments kind of in between, so that when you're in there, the gate goes down, you're locked in. They even have a, an option for gates behind you and like a little kind of like a roving guard that walks back and forth. But you of course pay for that checkpoint. But these uh, easy go passes, yeah, that's it's also you can kind of go uh, whizzing through while everybody sits and use those, uses those machines that kind of miraculous, isn't it? All this technology that we have and still um, where before you could just kind of toss maybe a dime in those little things. You could, you don't even have to stop moving. You just kind of toss the change in the little baskets. I remember that when I was a kid. Because why? Because the tolls weren't that much. They would be maybe 25 cents for toll. Now the same tolls, I remember, uh, they were about 20 cents now or a dollar 50 if not more so now you have to use bills right you can't use change because they just skyrocketed so much so now they have these things you put the dollars in you think they're going to make those easy oh no no they don't and i've seen people about lose it in those things i've almost lost it in those things when they don't work when those machines don't work and that's for a reason is to get you uh just like in the airports on the uh on the special uh, good to go, you know, easy travel, right? Where you just basically surrender everything that they want you to do and capitulate, um, and then you can move freely and, and avoid long lines. So, yeah, like I said, states are looking uh, to new to tolls to pay for highways because they didn't pass a gas tax. So, and it says here drivers paying more for tolls using toll roads. So, they're already paying more for the tolls, and then they're going to make more roads into tolls. So, 35,000, almost 36,000 arrested yesterday, and it goes on there. 
talks about the amount of people that have been arrested uh, or are arrested every single day for non-violent crimes, which is a big deal. It makes up the majority of people. Uh, it says here 35,000 Americans arrested on a daily basis. So here's the big kicker, right? When the bond is posted, because this is a big business too, this isn't real justice. It's not, you know, if it was real justice, you'd be able to shoot somebody in the head if they try to steal your property or they harm your family or yourself, right? You should be able to do that, but you can't. You can't because they have to get in between and, and say, this is justice. You're going to pay this money and this money that you don't have. And then, uh, and then somehow that's going to that's gonna be fair. You're going to end up losing money. And of course you say, oh, what about uh, lawsuits, right? Well, those usually work for people that are like spill coffee on themselves and uh, basically they're, they're not taking responsibility for their own actions and then they try to blame some, some company or something like that for it. I mean, we, we all know that this whole bond process, it helps people with money. So when bond is posted, some of these people will have relatives or friends who are able and willing to bail them out. Many will not. For most, there's no grassroots bail fund, no jail support team waiting on the other side of the razor. So among those almost 36,000 American citizens that are arrested daily, some of them that won't be in that list are what? Illegal immigrants arrested in phony UPS van. So they were arrested, right? But uh, this, this is a propaganda piece, right? This whole UPS sting operation. He gives uh, uh, Americans the illusion that they're actually doing something to crack down on the borders when they're not, right? They're not. So we know what? We know the first time since depression, I've covered this just recently, more Mexicans are leaving the U.S. And enter, uh, than entering. So they're leaving. They're, you know, I guess you could say fleeing, whatever. They're getting the hell out of here. And that's why you have what? Mike, Michael Bloomberg of New York is planning to save this city by what? Suggesting that the federal government's deliberately force large municipalities to take in immigrants as the only hope for salvaging their battered economies. So he criticized Obama for deporting more immigrants. Well, it's not that they're doing that, it's just that they're leaving. <laughs> so he spoke at a forum time to release uh, of a new study titled Not Coming to America, Why the U.S. is Falling Behind the Global Race for Talent. It should be titled what? Not or Fleeing America Because the United States is falling behind in the global race for slave labor. But yeah, I mean, they're going to have, what, aerial drones patrolling the border, so, and it's for what? It could be anything. It could be weapons. It could be narcotics. It could be people. But we know that what? That the governments themselves are actually bringing guns into the drug cartel's hands. That's right. So it said, uh, a year and four months have passed since the whistleblower agents with the ATF uh, went public with the Obama regime's scheme to place guns in the hands of Mexican drug cartels in order to create false statistics that would prove that most of the firearms used by the criminals in Mexico come from the U.S. and justify the call to or for drastic new U.S. gun control laws. But it says, although the legal plot was brought to an abrupt end, apparently the U.S. border agent used a scheme as an inspiration for his own personal fast and furious operation. And those drones are usually used for what? Those drones are usually uh, for making sure that certain types of drugs from certain types of people go through and that other uh, competing ones that don't whatever pay off whatever the payment is that they don't go through so in other words only authorized illegal drugs are allowed to go through so but uh yeah but we have this banks financing mexico gangs admitted in wells fargo deal so yeah it goes on there and it says that Laundering money. The smugglers had bought the DC-9 with laundered funds. They uh, transferred through the two biggest banks in the U.S., Wachovia and Bank of America, Bloomberg reports. And we have former J.P. Morgan lobbyist manages the banking committee that's expected to investigate J.P. Morgan's trading law. So this makes a lot of sense. It's the same type story with this. I mean, it was actually uh, Wells Fargo or Wachovia, uh, maybe the same thing. But uh, they were actually in charge of what? Monitor, monitoring and investigating themselves. So this is kind of standard policy. And uh, when crazy things happen and the economy gets bad, what? People are gonna get desperate. So this is near my neck of the woods, Valparaiso standoff ends, hostages free. So police in Valpo, uh, Indiana, say that a gunman who had several hostages inside a real estate office shot himself, ending a standoff that began Friday morning. So, wow, I thought he was dead. He is being treated for two self-inflicted gunshots to the head. 
And where was it? Oh, it was the Prudential Executive Group. He says that the man went into the business because he believed someone there owed him money. So, so apparently the guy was there on Thursday to express his displeasure with them. And uh, it followed by what? The police officer said, we do train and we do work well together with other agencies. I know this is the county seat and they have a humongous police state. I, one of the comments said, I don't necessarily agree with all of it, but you never know, he could be a hero. Obviously, he won't be getting his money. In best case scenario, he'll be in jail. But if he was truly ripped off by this company, they'll surely think twice before doing it again. Hillary Clinton hits black helicopters crowd to push C treaty. So she took on conservative forces uh, that twice have blocked ratification of the United Nations Law of the Sea Treaty, calling its crucial U.S. economic and strategic interests in the Pacific and elsewhere. The top American diplomat, or now a technocrat, she's a pure globalist, uh, says here, said that some of the arguments against the treaty, quote, cannot even be taken with a straight face. She's kind of smiling there, smirking. She says uh, that this includes claims that the United States would have to pay a, quote, U.N. tax that it would give the UN power over the US Navy and it would erode US sovereignty. Honestly, I don't know where these people make these up. She shited critics who object to the US joining any UN treaty saying, quote, of course, that means the black helicopters are on their way, quote, a reference to conspiracy theories about a world government. <laughs> as if there isn't one, right? That's why I call my thing GGN Global Government News, as if there isn't one, right? It's a play on words. So an Idaho uh, senator said, I hope you weren't scoffing at us. There's some good stuff in here, but uh, if we give up one scintilla of sovereignty that this country has fought for, bled for, has given up our treasure and the best that America has, I can't vote for it, he said. It involves uh, the seafloor where they can find rare earth minerals to make mobile phones and flat screen TVs. So, hey, we got to do it. It's going to, we got to keep our mobile phones and our, and our, and our uh, TVs going, right? But some of you are already aware that there, we already have uh, seceded our sovereignty to the United Nations through what? World Heritage and Biosphere Reserves of National Parks. And here's the pictures that she took. This is just in the Smoky Mountains from 83 uh, Community of Nations, the United Nations one down here. So she did her research and she said, you won't find the smoking gun, whether you know it's under UN uh, jurisdiction by reading the treaties. It can only be found by understanding the intent and implementation of the policies, and that's where you become a conspiracy theorist. And another conspiracy theory is what? The TPP, or Trans-Pacific Partnership. So according to a senator, Obama and his cabinet have gone out of their way to keep Congress uninformed on the details surrounding the TPP. He says the massive corporations with personal stock in it uh, have been all too informed, though. So representatives of U.S. corporations like Halliburton, Chevron, Comcast, uh, the MPAA uh, are being consulted and made privy to details of the agreement, claims the senator. And moving on to some euro news, Greece to exit euro, new currency to fall, 60% says Citibank. So then we have fearing eurozone exit, more Greeks stop paying taxes. So it says here, uh, Spain's fourth biggest lender, Bankia SA, uh, shares were suspended ahead of rescue details. Of course, they'll ask uh, the state for a rescue of more than 15 billion euros. Kind of like TEPCO in Japan, they're going to what? Oh, nationalize. They're going to socialize the losses to the taxpayers because private uh, corporations didn't want to uh, pick up the bill. Well, no, they don't want to do that. They want to privatize the profits. That's how corporatism works. So it says here, Van Rompuy uh, or Smithers to draft plan for deeper economic union. Like, we didn't see that coming. A typical problem, reaction, solution, or order out of chaos. says here, uh, potentially creating a intergovernmental treaty. Remember, a super president, they're going to create an uber president as well. So just like Rahm Emanuel, uh, the dictator of Chicago, said, you know, you can't let a crisis go to waste, right? I think even Kissinger said that, so you gotta, you got to utilize it. So it's here, Francis Holland steps up Eurobond's push. So just like in Italy with Monty, just a revolving door of uh, crooks and globalists. Holland said he wanted to see Eurobonds written into the New World Order agenda of the European Union going forward. He sees, so he said he saw a jointly pooled Eurozone debt, uh, not as a trigger for growth, but a, as a long-term perspective for integration, just like Ron Pui was saying, right? Deeper economic union that would bolster the single single euro currency. So is there a Machiavellian scheme for a United States of Europe? Well, let's ask Ron Pui. He's ready to run for the United States of Europe. 
And as the EU celebrates its first airstrike on Somali pirates, the Iranian Navy rescues a U.S. cargo ship from pirates. Thank you.